My name is Brad Lurie. I'm the founder and CEO of Bright Light Systems, and we are one of the Energy Accelerator co cohorts. Uh, we were a go-to-market company in the 2013 track, and we're a, uh, um, um, is it demonstration? Is that what? So a demonstration company in the 2015 track. And as Jill mentioned, we are the company who is uh, doing one of the first international projects in, in Australia. Um, my topic today is to talk about reducing energy demand uh, with innovative lighting and management systems. And so someone astutely pointed out in the audience that, you know, one of the big demand drivers in this theater, in the arena, or outside is around HVAC. And clearly HVAC is the number one energy hog and energy consumer that's followed up right behind that with lighting. And so lighting is, is one of those areas where we're actually um, uh, addressing the demand side of the equation so that we can make alternative energies and solar and solar battery storage much more effective and efficient. And so it's an equation that has to be put together. And so what we have to do is we have to address the demand side of the equation simultaneously as we address the supply side of the equation. And if we don't do that, we truly have an imbalance. And so <coughs> we, uh, we were fortunate as a uh, go-to-market company that we did a project with, uh, with uh, Kaneohe Marine Base out on the, uh, P3, on the P3 apron. And we replaced some of the conventional HID high-intensity discharge lighting with our highly effic high efficiency lighting. We, we happen to use light emitting plasma, which is a point light source, uh, as opposed to some of the other things that you're reading about with LEDs or light emitting diodes. And so for, <coughs> for high output lighting, plasma is a much more effective source as a single point light source than LEDs. LEDs have been fantastic for a lot of your low illuminates, your interior, your, uh, your, your uh, um, some of the parking and area lighting, but typically uh, LED is most effective in the 150 watt and less market. And so plasma, our focus, and I'll show you a few things in here, is in the 250, 400, and, and 1,000 watt market. And those are the big energy hogs within the lighting piece. Where do I point this towards? There we go. Fantastic. Point, po point towards him. Excellent. So <coughs> the application emphasis that, uh, that I'd like to talk about today is, is really around high-mast uh, type lighting applications. And so that's aprons, it's piers, it's wharfs, uh, some of the area parking, general area fuel farms. Uh, and then in your interior is around your high bay applications, which are a lot of your hangars and munitions and other storage facilities. So these are generally high ceilings, uh, typically 400 watt or 1,000 watt uh, HID lights that have a short lifespan but have a high energy consumption. And so when we look at the high mass piece of this thing, the Kaneohe uh, uh, installation that we talked about was about a uh, $30,000 per annum energy savings. And that was just replacing half of the apron on the demonstration track. <coughs> and so we're now looking at advancing that out into the balance of that P3 apron, if you're familiar with the facility. Um, the, the photograph that you see on the right-hand side is actually of uh, Naval Station Everett, Washington. And, and that's a very interesting installation because we replaced their lighting out on the, uh, out on the piers and the connecting wharf. And the net result of this was a 1% reduction in their entire shore power. So it was a 30%. It was 30% of their annual target in 2014, uh, and it equated to 1% reduction in total shore power. So that was a big accomplishment. Uh, you know, taking into account they looked, they did other things in the buildings, and they did some HVAC as well. Uh, but that was a big, a big play. We're now looking more into the uh, into the hangers uh, application. We've done a demonstration through Energy Accelerator with uh, Wheeler uh, Wheeler Army Base. And uh, we've done uh, some recent things out at Kaneohe in the, uh, in the hangars and looking at some other, other, other opportunities there as well. Um, and, to, uh, and to Mr. Ross's uh, side, we have, uh, you know, we've taken the, the technology, the core of the technology came out of the Livermore uh, Laboratory. And so we're taking an American-made product with an American-made company and putting this together for our armed forces. Um, the other side is the, the uh, Livermore National Laboratories recently did a study around our products and technology for the whole tropic 
uh, application environment. So a lot of positive things coming. But a big part of, <coughs> wrong direction, sorry. A big part of, of what's driving lighting, and, and you're seeing it in building controls and building automation, is truly on the system side of things. And so we do realize that with high efficiency lighting, you can reduce a lot of, a lot of the wattage and a lot of the kilowatt consumption, but it can be even more so improved through automation and controls. Automation and controls not only further reduces the energy consumption, but it also prolongs the life of the technology. So again, it's a combination of hardware and software to drive the most effective and efficient uh, solutions. So taking control of lighting, again, you've seen this through companies like Johnson Controls. You've seen this through the Honeywells that have integrated from HVAC controls now into the building controls, looking at building automation, things like uh, motion sensors, ox sensors, uh, daylight harvesting sensors, and tying that back into the controls. <coughs> That hasn't really been deployed into the into the higher wattage application, so your hangers and into your uh, into your fields. Most of that's still controlled by a uh, by a breaker switch, and we uh, we certainly think there's a, a much more effective way of doing that. Um, this thing is a bit jump happy. <coughs> so typically, what we see is is in terms of a hardware, we're able to reduce energy by about fifty percent by replacing legacy hardware with current high efficiency technology. We couple that with the automation controls and we drive another 30 to 35 points of, uh, of improvements in the efficiency piece by being able to turn lights on when they need to be on, more importantly is turning them off when they don't need to be on, or dimming them down for the environment that we have. Again, we tie in things like motion sensors, so if we have movements or activities in the area, then we can bring the lighting back up to full speed, back up to full intensity, but then as the, as the movement subsides, can drop the intensity back down. And all that ties into, into the energy requirement, the energy consumption. So tying this back to Jordan's presentation, you know, there is a big issue around battery storage. And lighting, unlike most of your buildings, requires all of its consumption during the dark hours. So you're not producing uh, alternative energy if you're using PV technology. So it really is about how do we address this demand side so we make batteries much more effective and, and, and cost effective. Um, <coughs> one of the things that we're seeing in, in some of this is, is a typical system architecture looking at a wireless infrastructure is when we walk onto some of the bases, they say, we just can't even talk about wireless. We can't talk about controls. There's still so much uncertainty around cybersecurity. There's so much uncertainty around, you know, uh, <coughs> what data is being transmitted back through the airwaves. <coughs> and so we're looking at this and saying, okay, you know, we developed a cloud-based, a, a SaaS model, software as a service using Amazon Web Services. And oh, by the way, we put this right on the government, the Amazon government server, as opposed to the general server. So I think you know we've been able to, to prove the, the whole uh, structure is sound through the AWS uh, uh, government cloud. And so you know again, that gives the ability to be able to fully automate you know from, from your, your tablet or from your, uh, from your PC um, and to be able to control these things. The other piece of this is, is being able to understand that demand. So in, in our lighting systems, we measure all of the energy, that's consumed by each of these fixtures. So at the end of a given period, whether that's a day, a week, a month, a quarter, uh, whatever, we can tell you what that demand requirement was. And I think as we, as we continue to collect this information, it's gonna help us to really start to analyze. And, and, and again, that analysis will be able to tie us back into our, our demand, uh, our, our, uh, our supply side, and really start to understand, okay, so at nighttime, you know, we've got our HVAC systems. We're starting to do a better job of managing those and monitoring those. Now we've got our exterior lighting starting to do a better job managing and monitoring those. So, you know, what is our true requirement at the nighttime? And that's where these systems can come in to uh, give us some advanta advantages. Um, I won't go into a lot of details or, or, or bore you with the grassroots, but, you know, essentially it's the ability to put a node on a light fixture to be able to tie that back into some sort of a communications device and then spread it out onto the network in the most simplistic format. Um, <coughs> intelligence and lighting controls means not only can I remotely turn them on or off, but I can also tie in uh, secondary and, and tertiary equipment as we talked about, uh, daylight uh, sensing or motion controls 
or uh, occupancy sensors. So again, if we have an area that doesn't necessarily need to be lit all night long, today's, today's uh, uh, infrastructure is I've got it on a breaker, I turn that light on, that light burns all night long, or I've got it on a mechanical photo sensor, and when the sun sets, it clicks on with a relay until the sun rises, so it burns at 100% all night long. You know, our whole philosophy is, you know, let's turn lights on where they should be, turn them off where they don't need to be, or dim them down to give us the safety and security that we're looking for. Um, <coughs> two, two different structures and strategies. Uh, one is actually going into a SaaS type uh, solution where it's a, a, a cloud-based, or the other is just simply a hardware where we take a gateway device that's, that's, uh, that's physically located at the site, provides the similar functionality, but that interface is a one-to-one, -one. so from that gateway out to those localized systems, so you're bypassing going and taking the detail up into, uh, up into a cloud-based solution. <coughs> the levels of granularity with automation give us uh, you know, truly new insights into what our capabilities can be. Um, and, and again, it, it's just really about drilling down into the data that's available from these newer technologies being able to do things like understand how long is this, has this light been burning, so when should I schedule maintenance on them? You know, am I running up at the end of my operation? Uh, is it getting near the end of life? And those sorts of things that you can start to do predictive and, and scheduling of, of maintenance around these. And so I think that's one of the big drivers with automation. Um, again, just more on the, on the uh, location and, and the, the granularity of being able to dive into the system. Um, and, and then just to have the ability to report back out, you know, what sort of information do I have, what sort of, of problems do I have, and being able to address those effectively. And then the last, and I think one of the most important things that we're seeing in software is, is scheduling. So if you have an operation and you know what those patterns are, you can schedule your lights on a rolling calendar to be able to turn them on or off or dim them down. And so again, Automation in, in the automation system is, is driving a, a big piece of, uh, you know, the energy efficiency equation. So hopefully that's a, a quick snapshot. Thank you. Uh, one, one question. Can I separate the two? If I have my own uh, hardware, my own lighting system, can I just add your bright light management system? It depends on what you have. If, if it's just simply a, a relay to control an on-off, we can do that. If you're, uh, if you're into more of the advanced technologies and you want to dive in uh, you know, at, the, uh, at the driver level, we can interface, yes. Yeah, so, I mean, there is a separation of it, but it's about what functionality are you looking for. When you did the, um, uh, the look at the at the ship, uh, ship dock, did you do you do you have a ballpark idea of what return on investment is? Is it, you know, if you did thirty thousand dollars, they saved in a year, is that equivalent to uh, your return on investment as a one-year investment or a two-year investment uh, before they get their return? A big part of that's driven through the energy costs. So places like Hawaii clearly are higher, uh, higher utility costs. So in the case of Kaneohe, it was under a two-year payback on the investment. Uh, in terms of uh, a, a Naval Station Everett, Washington, they're five cents a kilowatt hour. So it's a nine-year just basing it purely on energy savings. Or, or if it's Afghanistan, it's three days or so. Well, know, exactly, yeah. exactly. The Caribbean or some of the remote sites. I mean, you know, let's face it. We're we're good stewards as our military forces. We're we're paying these other, you know, these other locations the highest rent and utility rates. How how difficult is it to retrofit uh, existing systems? Because I, I, I'm not familiar with the the plasma based technology uh, that you're. We're we're, we're a complete light. So we don't go in and change components out, you know. So from a retrofit, it's disconnect the fixture, disconnect three wires, reconnect three wires, and, and connect our light. So and we believe that's the most efficient. So is the is the your your interface uh, for fixture connections? If, if I've already got a bunch of poles and things that hold the lights up. And I, when you come in, are you pretty flexible in being able to attach to 
almost any type of poll that I might come up with that already is there, or do I have to replace the poll with the new no, one? No, our, our, our MO and, and uh, the way that we started was understanding that the retrofit was our biggest market play as opposed to new construction. So we're a simple retrofit. It's the same type of mount configuration, whether it slides on the arm or it's a trunnion style or if it mounts to a pole. Okay, sir, I think you're off the hot seat.